Oh, it's, it's Potaxis pistillaria. It's one of the only desert mushrooms that you get. This is in Montagna arenaria. Montagna arenaria. But anyway, you can see, if you're a mushroom, it doesn't, there's another one popping over there. If you're a mushroom, it doesn't make a lot of sense to just have a typical, uh, you know, stalking cap. You know, the cap opens, exposing the gills to that dry air. They're just going to dry out real quick before any of the spores can get out. So what they do is a lot of these, these desert mushrooms, instead, uh, they've got ancestors with that are typical stalking cap mushrooms for more music that is wet environments. But here, they just uh, keep their cap closed and all the spores mature on the inside. And then they just wait to dry out. They keep the cap closed like that. You can see right here is a great example of one. And then uh, once they dry out properly, which this is almost on the verge of it, then there's the spores and they wait for an animal to kick it over and then they get their spores out into the wind. But these spores are pretty much mature. See, they're already, we're going to do lines of them after we're filming actually. But what, what makes me curious is what is it eating? These are saprotrophic mushrooms. They're eating dead stuff in the soil. I assume it's just dead roots of uh, Atroplex and Creosote bush, Larea tridentata over there. And that uh, Atroplex hymenolytra, wonderful member of the spinach and quinopode and quinoa family. But one of the only mushrooms you'll encounter in deserts. This in Montagna arenaria and maybe a couple other species. But that's about it. Not a lot of whole mushroom diversity in deserts because there's not a lot of organic material to eat because it's so hot and dry. But when there is organic material to eat, something's still got to break it down. And that's where you get this relatively short cast of uh, desert fungi to come in. So I got to go back. So bye.